my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back to another episode of Hard Times where I explore recipes from times of food scarcity. Today I'm going to be continuing with my Desperation Pie series and I'm going to be making a vinegar pie. Now if you missed the first Desperation Pie, which was for hot water pie, I will put the link above and down below. Now this recipe is going to come from this cookbook, which was very graciously sent to me by Carol. Carol, thank you so much for sending this to me. This book was written by her grandmother. It is called The Pioneer Cookbook. Ruth concludes a little bit of history about herself. She spent most of her life in Kansas. And in this book, she includes so many very interesting recipes. So hints for home comforts, very interesting. Soot tea, treatments for constipation, bad breath, tapeworms, how to dry out your boots, very practical advice, how to fix cracks in your floors, how to make a simple disinfectant, free foods, this is very interesting to me, cattails, ground cherry, pokeweed, running of the mallow. So there's a recipe for pemmican, which I've also made, if you haven't seen that video, I'll also put the link in the description as well. So the recipe that I'm gonna be making today comes off of this page and it's for vinegar pie. And I'm also gonna be using this one for the crust. So vinegar pie, also known as a desperation pie or a make-do pie, were often made when fruits were not in season. So if you didn't have any fruit, you made do and you used something that you had in the pantry, which included vinegar or cream or milk. So in my last desperation pie video, I got a lot of comments saying, that doesn't sound very desperate, that has eggs in it and butter. But 100 years ago, you raised your own chickens and you had a cow. So those things were not so difficult to get. I'm gonna use this pie crust recipe right here. It's called the Good Pie Crust, and I already blind baked that. So let me walk you through the steps of how I prepared that. So in a large bowl, you're gonna to sift together one and a half cups of flour, quarter teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And then you're gonna take one third of a cup of lard. You're gonna add that to the dry ingredients, and then using a fork, you're gonna cut that in there until it has the texture of cornmeal. Next, you're gonna add in a quarter cup of cold water, and I did this a tablespoon at a time, slowly kind of incorporating that until it forms a dough. Then you're gonna roll your dough out. I like to roll mine out between two pieces of wax paper. That way I don't have to use any extra flour. So this recipe says it's enough crust for two pies, but I found when I divided it in half, it was a little bit small for my nine inch pan, so I end up using about two thirds of the dough. So roll it out really thinly, place it into your pie dish, so I like to roll under the excess dough to kind of thicken up the edge of the crust. And if you like, you can go ahead and crimp it. So because this is a custard pie and we don't want a soggy bottom pie, we're gonna blind bake the pie crust. And take our pie crust and we're gonna use a piece of parchment paper and then dump in a bunch of beans or pie weights. And then put it in a 350 degree oven and bake it for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we're going to remove the beans and bake it for additional 12 minutes. And at this point, the pie crust shouldn't have much color to it. It should just be kind of set. Now we are ready to make the custard. First, we're gonna do is separate our eggs. I've got three eggs. Because we're making a meringue, I don't want any egg yolk contamination in my egg whites. So I'm going to break my eggs into a separate bowl here. And that way, if the yolk breaks, I won't contaminate everything. So yolks there, whites there. This is my favorite way of separating eggs just with my impeccably clean hands. And then I'm gonna go wash my hands. Got my yolks in there and we're gonna beat these until they're nice and thick. Now I'm adding one cup of sugar. One cup of sugar, three tablespoons of flour, and a third of a teaspoon of salt. Mix thoroughly. We've got two cups of boiling water. We're gonna add this slowly because we don't wanna scramble our eggs. So just a little bit to kind of temper them. Half a cup of cider vinegar. There we go. We're gonna cook it over hot water until thick and smooth. Thick and smooth, what does that mean? Not really sure. 
Okay. So we've got a little Bay Marie here, a little hot water bath. And we don't want the bottom of the bowl to touch the water. And keep stirring this until it thickens. We want to stir this constantly. Again, we don't want any scrambled eggs. Wow. Our custard is thickened. It's about as thick as a sauce. You can just run your finger through it and it cuts right through it. So now we're going to add our flavoring that's going to make this from vinegar kind of stinky pie into lemon make do pie. We're going to add one teaspoon of lemon extract. Because right now it's, yeah, it smells not so great. Ooh, and suddenly it smells like lemon jello. Yay! And it really does mask that vinegar smell. Although, if you get up close, you can still smell it. Okay. So I'm gonna let that cool a little bit. And now we're gonna prepare our meringue topping. So we're gonna take the three egg whites that we reserved, and we're gonna beat this into a meringue with three tablespoons of sugar. Here we go. By the way, this process happens faster if your eggs are at room temperature. Okay, let's continue. So now we're gonna fill our pie with our custard. Oh yes, fits perfectly. And now we're gonna top it with our whipped up meringue. Now if we wanted to get fancy, we could, you know, pipe this, but we're pioneers, aren't we? So we don't need to pipe this. So we're gonna just float this right on top. Oh my goodness. Then we're gonna bake this in a low oven, 325 degrees for 20 minutes. Then let it cool completely before we taste it. Get my meringue distributed here. Bye bye, see you in 20 minutes. By the way, what do you think of my new shirt, Eat the Ducky Moss? Of course, that is the auto translating of the phrase Eat the Ducky Moss, which in Japanese means give thanks, let's eat. And yeah, I thought it would make a fun shirt. If you want to get one, I'll put the link down below and you can get one. They're only running for a limited time only for the next two weeks. So get them while you can and look stylish in summer. All right, lovelies, here is my vinegar pie and I have let it cool in the refrigerator. Now this pie took a lot longer to bake than what it was instructed. It said 20 minutes, and this took about 40 minutes. To test for doneness, you can check the temperature of your custard cake by checking the temperature. So once it goes about 165 degrees, you know that it should be set. So mine took a very long time. It said 20 minutes in the instructions. Mine took more like 40, 45 minutes. And even as this is cool, this has some jiggle to it. So. I'm not sure how solid this pie is going to be. So I think where I might've gone wrong is when I was cooking my custard over my double boiler, it said to cook it until it was thick. And I think what I did was I cooked it until it was thickened. So if you decide to make this recipe, make sure you cook your custard longer than I did and cook it until it's thick rather than thickened. And then it will probably cook in the 20 minutes rather than the 40 minutes. So after 20 minutes, my meringue topping looked absolutely beautiful, white and kind of golden on the tips. But because I had to bake this longer, now my meringue looks a bit like peanut butter. <laughs> and it's weeping. And I think that's because my custard is very wet underneath. I've actually never cooked a custard pie with a meringue topping before. So yeah, my inexperience shows, doesn't it? At any rate, let's give this a taste. Let's cut into this thing. Oh. Oh yeah, that feels pretty jelly. Although the crust feels solid. Ooh, I can smell the lemon. It smells a lot like lemon yogurt, which was my favorite flavor as a kid, by the way. Lemon yogurt, that's what I always got, always. Lemon yo play. Actually, it was a toss up between lemon and strawberry. Those are my two favorite yogurts. These days, I never get lemon yogurt. It's always plain or vanilla and maybe strawberry if I get a flavor, maybe. Usually I like to add my own fruit. Anyways, I digress. Okay, let's get the slice out. All right, let's, the first slice is always the hardest. Let's see if we can get it out. Oh, I think it might, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at 
Look at my custard. Oh. Wah, wah, wah. So clearly my custard needed some more time to cook. <laughs> Although I think if you cooked it over the double boiler longer, perhaps to this consistency, once it baked for another additional 20 minutes, it would probably set up a lot better than this. But yeah, I think it'll still taste good though. Anyways, live and learn. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Ooh. I definitely taste the vinegar at the end. Initially, when you taste it, you taste all that lemon extract, which is an artificial lemony flavor. It tastes exactly like lemon yogurt. It has that pleasant fake lemony flavor that you taste when you have lemon flavored yogurt. And of course, because this has a half cup of vinegar in it, this is sour as well, similar to what you would expect if you made a lemon meringue pie. But at the end, I can definitely taste the vinegar, that kind of funky, zingy vinegar bite. It's sour enough, sour as lemons, but it doesn't have that bright sourness. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. The meringue is very nice. It's light and fluffy, slightly sweet, nice little textural contrast. Although I think that would be even better had my custard been cooked better. A little bit more set, a little bit more like say a lemon bar in texture, I think that would be really great. Crust is great, nice and flaky and light. So even though my custard didn't set, the crust at the bottom is really nice and flaky. It's not soggy. Mm -hmm. A fine crumb and that's a lard based pie crust. It's quite nice, I like that. So basically what we've made here is a lemon meringue dupe. When you don't have lemons, you just use vinegar. And for what it is, it's not bad. It's certainly not the real thing and you can tell it's not the real thing, but when you want something special, something sweet, you make vinegar pie. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Let me know down in the comments if you wanna see more desperation pies like a Hoosier pie, a cream pie, a sorghum pie. I believe there's a molasses pie. There's chess pie. Let me know down in the comments below. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. <laughs>